All right, Dave. Sorry, I was uh, in the shower. Eddie, glad to see you back on your feet. Just wanted to shake your hand. My. What for? You are a genuine have-a-go hero, old son. <laughs> the world would be a far better place if there were a few more people like you around, I can tell you. Well, I was stupid, really. Just dived in on the spare of the moment, you know. Nonsense. It was an act of outstanding courage. I only wish more people had your guts. By the way, uh, what do you think about them arresting Mick Johnson like that? Listen, Dave, I'd love to stop and talk, but uh, I'm due down the police station, you know. They're having an ID parade and I have to be there with being a witness like... Really? Bit of a rum deal, if you ask me. Usually there's no smoke without fire. Well, it's hard to know what to do, but I can't really see Mick as an armed robber. I remember the day it happened. The way he came screaming round the back of the shops in his car, nearly ran your good lady wife down in the process. He'd definitely been up to something. I know, but uh, he usually comes across as such a good guy. I mean, he saved our leaf from a bad accident. I love. Well, whatever. He has been kept in for questioning. Well, we'll just have to let the law run its course, eh, Dave? Spoken like a true hero. Proud to know you, Eddie. Proud to know you. Thank you. Well, we've managed to get your husband onto an identification parade this morning. You arrested him before the service. He never got the chance to become my husband. I am sorry about that. We've got two witnesses ready to have a look at him. And what happens if they identify him? He could be charged. You can't charge an innocent guy. Mix the law-abiding family money, he'd never get involved in any kind of violence or robbery. We hear that kind of stuff a lot from fellas who carry guns. They say they carry the gun to prevent them having to use violence. Mick's just a dad, that's all. Who's been in trouble for assault before. And who's been up to his neck in debt and money troubles for a good while now. He's worked really hard to get himself out of debt. He's a pizza man, not a criminal. We find all sorts of people are attracted to the idea of easy money these days. Even people like you. You're wasting your time and public money talking to me. You'll never prove anything against me because there's nothing to prove. I mean, has Mick even got a solicitor or someone helping him? There will be a duty solicitor at the identification parade. There'll be no one able to identify him because he wasn't involved in the robbery in the first place. What's the matter? I hate being Rachel Jordash. What's put this on? I hate this stupid house. I hate school. I hate my family. What else do you want me to say? Hey, what's happened? I even have to drink water with that poor. All my mates are drinking cans of Coke and stuff. And I have to go to the toilets and drink out the tap. Yeah, but I know things have been tight for a while, but... It's... Oh, things are always tight in this house. And I'm getting fed up of being called a pov at school. Because I can never afford what everyone else gets. Simon. Teddy? Simon. Leave him sleeping, it might do him some good. Simon. Right. Let's get the restaurant then, eh? See if we still got a strike in our hands. Simon. Simon. Just go. Simon. Just run. Simon. Run. 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 You're all right, sir. You're all right now. It's a good pain. Yeah, but it's all right. It's only a dream, that's all. A dream. This way then, please, sir. Okay, gentlemen, fancy dress time. <laughs> Love. Oh, hold on, you've been there for ages. I can't let's cross forever, you know. 
Yeah, I'll be out now. Mom? <sighs> oh, go past the door, I'm all right. No, I'll just be here from work. Have you been crying? Mom, what's the matter? Oh, you know, it's... It's just being so much in debt and stuff like that. It's getting on top of me. I can't even afford to buy Rachel a new school blouse, never mind new jeans or anything. I can't go let your friend in, don't leave her standing outside. Well, she might as well get used to it. We're going to be standing outside the restaurant picketing all day. Hey, Kenny Maguire's not been giving you an hassle, has he? No, no. Look, go on, go on. Can you put your mask on, please? Where would you like to sound? Okay, gentlemen, if you'd like to move off to your right, let this gentleman in. That's fine. We won't keep you a moment, Mr. Banks. Don't get yourself in a state, hon. I'm not. I just don't know what the police expect of me. I've already said I never saw the robbers' faces, and now they want me to identify one of them on an ID parade. Yeah, and they were wearing masks, weren't they? Look, you can only do your best. Yeah, I know, but, I mean, Mick Johnson as well. He's going to be on this parade, isn't he? I mean, I know the fella. Yeah, well, you won't be picking Mick out if you know it wasn't him, will you? I don't know what I know anymore, love. I know what Ali felt like now. Stuck inside a police station for hours. Mm. At least we're not locked up in a cell. And how Marianne's getting on. Be just routine, woman. Because she had access to a lot of inside info. Like. Mm. And I'm because they sacked her. I mean, the police might think she had a grudge against Lightroom Tech. Who knows, eh? Mr. Banks? Oh, no way, just seen staff at all. On strike, Emma, Beth, all the other girls. We'll cope. We'll do it ourselves. I'm not a waitress, I'm a manager. Well, you can manage a bit of waitress in the car, it'd be good experience for you. Oh, we've only been open a week. Can they do this? Look, I mean, your father, he was a big trade union man, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, and I'm not. Well, didn't he teach you anything about industrial relations? Listen, this is the way your big strikes these days, isn't it? By the management getting their hands dirty, doing the workers' jobs for them. This way, we prove to them we can manage without them. Theoretically. Hello? Jimmy, where are you? Smallest knife on the outside. Right, well, uh, get yourself over here right now, will you? Napkin on the side, please. Yeah. The restaurant, where do you think? We are not having Jimmy Corkill as a waiter. Look, will he just get moving? Is Teddy all right, is he? What? D Jimmy Corkill is an ex-con. He's a drug addict, and he, he burgled my house. Yeah, and he used to work in the prison kitchens, didn't he? So he can help us slopping out here. Yeah, look, uh, bring Sally with you if he thinks that's best. Not Terry. Oh, well, this is a pantomime now. Yeah, look, you can help out in the kitchen as well, Carly. Yeah, and Jimmy, look, um, do us a favour, go to the banks and see if Mo McGee's still there for us. Yeah, well, she's not working at the club tonight, so ask her to come over as well, all right? Thanks a lot. See, she's a good barmaid, Mo, so she might make a good waitress. This one way glass stuff. Feels like every one of them can see me. <laughs> they can, can they? No, don't worry. I'm sorry, this is impossible. I couldn't point the finger at any one of them. Just a couple of final questions, then. You could try... Would you like to go home now, Mr. Wire? My job's a serious job. I take it seriously. Someone could have been killed in this robbery. I'm really very tired, you know? Well, go on, then. 
Are you still certain you can't account for Mr Johnson's whereabouts at the time of the robbery? I've already told you. I wish I could. I really wish I could. Your fiancé has no one to prove that he was elsewhere when the robbery was committed. Any questions that you answer truthfully can only help his case. Look, me being here is just ridiculous. Unless you really believe that I've committed an armed robbery. I'm not questioning you on a charge of robbery. We are merely trying to establish certain information surrounding a violent crime. Well, pardon me for my ignorance. Am I going to be able to see Mick? That depends on the outcome of the ID parade. OK, if you'd just like to lower your masks to just below your eyes, please. Just take your time. said you often came here. Yeah, I do. Wish I didn't sometimes, especially when they come home fourth like that one. Uh, you've not had one of your creditors around getting heavy, have you? No, no, I, um, I've never been in a betting shop before. You want to try having a bet sometime? Well, I'd need the money to bet with first. I hope you've not come looking to borrow more off me, have you? No, no. Oh, is there somewhere we can talk? Yeah, of course there is. There's a decent pub down the road. We can slip in there and have a talk. No, I don't, I don't really want to go for a drink. Just an orange juice or something. We can have a nice chat. You can pick me out a horse. You never know. You might get lucky for me. I'd like to be lucky for myself for a change. Hey, Mandy, your luck already changed. You met me, didn't you? Is it wasn't worth the hassle? Oh, well, good for them. Paddy Grant is going to blow a blood vessel. Yeah, well, it's tough. <laughs> you know, it feels like we should have placards or a banner or something, doesn't it? You know what to write, honey. Stop sex exploitation in the workplace. <laughs> What's going on here? Um, this is our picket line. <laughs> isn't this just typical of young people today? Usual thing, is it? More money, longer holidays? No, we're striking because we're being forced to wear degrading uniforms. I should have known you'd turn out to be an anarchist. You know, in my day, people were proud to wear uniforms to fight for their country. Excuse me. This is my son-in-law's business you're trying to ruin, you know? Stop Support the exploitation the strike. in the workplace! Support the strike! Aye, 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 aye. What's going on here? Well, this is our picket line. We're trying to convince people not to cross it. Oh, right. What for? Well, the management are insisting... Picket you... line, my backside. Get out of it. Come on, mate. Come on, mum. I want to know the full story before I cross any picket lines. Yeah, and I want to get a week's wages, don't I? So I'm out of it. What's the score? Barry Grant's trying to convince us to wear these really revealing uniforms. I mean, there's hardly anything off them. It's murder. All the businessmen coming in and ogling you while you're trying to work. I, I bet you he tries and gets the bar stuff at the loot in them soon. Mm -hmm. Over my dead body, he will. Mo, get a move on, will you? No chance. You won't? Seems to me these girls have got a legitimate grievance. What are you talking about? It's got nothing to do with you. Hey, us workers and women have got to stick together. So you're not going to cross our picket line? Cross it, I'm joining it, love. Oh, good on you. This is typical of you men, and especially men bosses. You think you can get away with murder? Yeah, it's a real power trip for some of them. Well, I've never scabbed in my life, and I'm certainly not starting now for Barry Grant. Mo, just do us a favour, please. Get in here. Barry's told me to bring you down, hasn't he? He's gonna go spare with me. 
tough. I tell him I'm outside and I'm chaining myself to the railings. I'm doing me Emily Pancake impression. <laughs> you what? Just get in, scab. <laughs> nice one. Well done. <laughs> so what do we do now, then? Just pick us, I suppose. And try and stop people from crossing it. Well, anyone tries to get past me and I'll bite their legs off. <laughs> Any sign of Mick yet? No, just the court officials and everyone milling about. Do you think he really did it? But you just don't know these days. You could be living next door to a murderer and never even know it. Yeah, well, if he did, he must have been driven to it. I mean, there was all that talk of big debts, wasn't there? After he lost the bungalow. And we couldn't have helped getting Marianne sacked. Yeah. So, how's Rachel? Oh, being made fun of at school for being... Well, do you know what teenagers are like? For being what? A pov, they call her. You know, not having enough money for new clothes and stuff. Kids, eh? Did you like horse racing, then? Oh, I love it. Especially picking winners. And do you manage that regularly? <laughs> no, not really. Used to this kind of thing. What kind of thing? You know, going out to pubs, going out with a man. <laughs> it's just an ordinary, friendly thing to do. Oh, not quite, not considering why I'm here. I thought you wanted a little chat. But you're not making this very easy for me. Sorry. I just say what you want to say. Well, not more than anything else in the world, I want to be out of debt. I know. That's why I made you my special offer, Mandy. And you must have... Well, go to bed with every woman who owes you money. Oh! What do you take me for? Well, why me? Because I like you. A lot, Mandy. I mean, there's times when... You just seem like you need some happiness. Looking after. And there's other times when... I don't know. You're really strong. Inside, I mean. You were some mysterious woman with a big, dark secret. I just want to get to know you better, that's all. So am I the first woman you've made this special offer to? You are, yes. I promise. I'll get us another drink later. No, no. <sighs> Look, please, if, if you like me so much, isn't there any way you could just forget the money I owe you completely? Sorry, Mandy. I couldn't do that. I hate having so much money. It's embarrassing. It's horrible not being able to give Rachel what she wants. Well, you only have to give me what I want. That'll solve all your problems. <clears throat> I think I need a bit more time to think about it. It's a great offer, Mandy, don't you think? You'd be a fool not to take it. I'm very grateful. Just pay a visit. Give you time to have a little think about it. Going in? I don't know now. Maybe we shouldn't have come here. It's embarrassing having been through all the ID for eight stuff. Has Rick come in yet? Eh, hey, he's just gone in the dock now. Did you pick him out on the identity parade? I never know. I couldn't say it was any of them for sure. Picked up by all trees of the cleaner, though. Look, you go in if you want, love. I'll hang on out to you. I don't think it'll look too good if Mick sees me as if I've come for a nose or something. I think we're going to have to come to some compromise here. I'm not backing down. I'm not talking about backing down. I'm talking about a compromise. This is going to kill our reputation. I honestly can't see what's wrong with this uniform. Would you wear it? Absolutely. Oh, aye, aye, Bing. Not one of them, are you? What? Uh, no, what I meant was... David, I think it would be better if you keep out of this. No. In my opinion, the uniform goes with the job. If they don't like it, there's plenty of unemployed people who will. Uh, excuse me, we're trying to resolve a dispute here, not start a fight, all right? 
Yes, another two decided to go somewhere else. Can I borrow your mobile, Mr. Grant? No, why? Just so I can phone all the girls and work in the loop. You know, get them to come out in sympathy. <laughs> come on, Barry. Look, we've got too much cash tied up in this place to get off to this kind of start. I think you're going to have to give in gracefully. There's no way we can cope on our own. Looks like I want to lose it here, then, doesn't it? Yeah, same as I should be doing to make. So what's happening? Oh, they haven't read the charges out yet. They'll never be able to make it stick. It looks exhausted. The court will rise. Here we go. What do you think? I reckon they'll back down. Fingers crossed. Well, we've got a suggestion we'd like to put to you. We're prepared to forget about the uniforms. Great. On one condition. And what's that? As a sort of productivity deal, you work on Christmas Day. Trouble time. Double. Double time and a half. All right, double time and a half, but that's our last offer. OK, that's a deal, as long as all the other girls agree. I'll come and help you persuade them. Well, hopefully that's that all over and done with. Now perhaps we can get back to work. What up to us, then? You were lucky this time, so don't get cocky. I wanted to sack the lot of you. I know you were the ringleader, so you better be on your best behaviour, or else. Hey, they've charged him with robbery and carrying a firearm. Has he been remanded? No, they're letting him out on police bail. Well, that's something, I suppose. I didn't do it, you know that, don't you? I was nowhere near the police. I know. Come on, let's get you home. See the kids. But I'm finished, aren't I? I want to go away from this. And I'm innocent. I didn't do it. Channel 4 book, Brookside, Life in the Close, is out now, price £14.99. Well, starting over on ITV soon, peak practice. Here on 4 after the break, Ellen meets the man of her dreams. Trouble is, the man of her nightmares seems determined to spoil things. A shave. Hope you've left me some water. There's loads. Daddy? Oh my god! Out! I made you the cup of tea. Get out! What's going on? Hey, tea up. Your U bend is now clear, madam. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's our love. Our car's still in this pit. Yeah, I think he's gone into hibernation. Yeah, well, I'd rather have a layabout for the sun than a scab. Oh, Eddie, I'm sick of hearing that word scab. Look, the strike's over. You won, didn't you? Yeah, sorry, love. So our car is back on the dole. You've got a job to go to. Yep, and it even looks like there's going to be some always. Get the place back on its feet. Huh? So, as this will be my last day off for a while, why don't we get into town and do the crazy shop? Yeah, all right. Any idea what to get the boys? Well, I'll leave our car up to you, but uh, yeah. I've got our lead boxed off. Come on. Yeah. There you are. A trial bike? You're off 
Have you read? Do what? God, there's no way I'm having our Lee riding around on a motorbike. He's underage and he can't go on the roads. Oh, but it's only for messing around the back field, isn't no. it? No. But he deserves it. Been doing dead well since he come home and you know he's well into mechanics. Yeah, and that's why he got into trouble, remember? Because he was always messing around with cars and motorbikes and because we taught him how to drive. We shouldn't be encouraging him. Don't want him taken away from us again. Yeah, all right. Look, if you're so keen on him having a bike, let's get him a mountain bike. <laughs> a push bike? Yeah, well, all the kids have got them. Be a lot healthier for them as well. OK. Well, if he doesn't like it, I know it's to blame. Um, if you could take the stuff from the kitchen first, please. Thanks. Uh, just a minute. Nick? Just give us a minute, eh, boys? Sorry about this. Look, we need to talk. OK. Hold this. Can't wait. Till when? Till when I haven't got this charge hanging over me. Mick, you heard your solicitor. If you go to trial, it could be as long as six months away, even longer. I know, I know all that, but I just can't think about anything else at the moment, least of all moving house. I just need some stability for me and the kids. I know how you must be feeling, but whether we move or not, we still have to start paying the mortgage from today. So what's the point of having the house lie empty? We have to live somewhere. I just feel better staying here, just for the time being, just just till everything's settled. But that means paying rent on this place as well as the mortgage. We just can't afford it, Mick. I'm not working. My savings won't last forever. And all this moving and then settling in again, and the kids as well. It's all too much. I thought of it's doing me head in. Well, am I doing your head in? No, of course you're not. You know I couldn't get by without you. Good. So let's go ahead and get married. Well, when? As soon as we can. This week, if possible. Oh, hang on, just hold on a minute. What for? You do still want to marry me, don't you? Yeah, of course I do, but a wedding, like... Well, after all that last week, all this going on now, I mean... I can't say I'm in the mood for celebrating. Well, I wasn't thinking about throwing a big party or anything. Just a quiet ceremony this time. And what about the vows? The ones about me promising to take care of you and that? How can I manage that if I end up locked up in prison? You're not going to prison, Mick. You've done nothing wrong. Now, let's just get on with our lives. I want to marry you. And I want to marry you. But I can't. And I'm not going to, not until I've cleared my name. Then we can have a proper wedding, a proper party. What about the new house? I'm sorry, Marion. But I'm staying here. Me and the kids. I've got to hold it all together for their sake. I fought hard to keep my family together, and I'm not going to let all this business break us up now. We've got a visitor. Eddie, old son, hello there. Oh, all right, Davy. Oh, I would be, if I could get the bully boy bureaucrats to see sense. You are. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, still waging your one-man war against the wheelie bins, eh? Too true. Well, I shall carry on the fight against those monstrosities till the bitter end. We'll fight them on the beaches, eh, Dave? You bet. Mm. Spirit of the underdog battling against the odds, Eddie. Sentiments I'm sure you'll appreciate in the light of your heroic actions recently. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, by the way, um, I was wondering, have you heard anything further on the Mick Johnson saga? Oh, yeah. He got charged with armed robbery. Has he really? Remarkable. Mm. Seems such a decent chap. Exactly. And uh, innocent till proven guilty, eh? But of course. Yeah, uh, anyway, we better get going, eh, Ed? They're going Christmas shopping. Really? Yeah. So, uh, what have you decided to get the two lads then? Well, not sure about our car, but we thought a mountain bike for Ollie. A bicycle? Mm -hmm. Excellent, yes. A bit difficult to hide from prying eyes in here, I would have thought. Especially a young lad's eyes. Hey, that's the point. Ideally, I suppose you need somewhere to store it out of sight. You've got a shed, haven't you, Dave? Yes. And as chairman of the Residents Association, I'm sure you'd agree it's your duty to help out your fellow residents. Well, I don't I mean, know Especially that... a local hero like Eddie. And you wouldn't want to ruin our Lee's Crimbo surprise now, would you? No, of course not, no. Yes, well, you might guess. Oh, my God, what now? Look, it's uh, it's all right. I'll clear it up. Don't worry. What's he doing? He's uh, looking for the newspaper. Probably wants to see what's on the telly or something, doesn't he? 
This is too much, Barry. First he gets into bed with me, and, and now he's turning our home into a slum. You're going to have to do something. I am doing something. I'm looking after him. I'm trying to get him better. Look, I know he's your friend. He's my best friend, and I'm his best friend, and I'm all he's got. I know, but I think he needs more than friendship. He needs proper care, proper help. I can look after him. I know him better than anyone. But I know what he needs. And what about my needs? Eh? Hey? I can't even relax in my own home anymore. And do you know why? Because your best friend frightens me. And I've had enough. I want him out. You what? For his sake, as well as mine. You've got till Friday. Either he goes or I do. I'll get it. Oh, hi. Come in. Hi. Not interrupting in here, am I? Not at all. Sorry about the mess. Ah, yes. Uh, everything OK? So much waste in the world. So much thrown away. So, Max, what can we do for you? Oh, yes, uh, just to remind you, it's uh, Thomas's birthday party this afternoon. Trust you'll be coming? Well, Barry's got an important meeting with the brewery, haven't he? Ah, oh, of course. Good luck. Yeah, well, I might have to cancel, mightn't I? You can't. It's taken me ages to set this meeting up. You've got to be there. And on your own. You can't afford to mess these people around. Yeah, well, if, you know, what's going to happen to Teddy? Well, you're just going to have to get somebody to look after him, aren't you? Oh, I trust uh, you'll be coming to the party, eh, Pen? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, Mandy, pleased to see me, eh? How are you doing here? Oh, waiting for you, of course. What do you want? Just a friendly chat. Can I give you a lift? No, thanks. Well, I, uh, I thought you might fancy another drink, you know, like last week. Please, just leave me alone. Now, you know I can't do that, Mandy. We're too involved. I don't have to follow you all the way home, do I? So how come you're staying here with Leon and Janet? Look, I can't move anywhere around me until like this. It's done in me too. All right. You were really looking forward to it. I'm sorry, eh, mate? Yeah. Hi, Gary. Hiya. Uh, I came to give you the hand moving, but... It's all right. Thanks. Anyway, listen, guys. Uh, you get yourself off of him. Thanks. Yeah, I'll be back later with me dad for work. I'll see ya. Yeah, Bye. See ya. I've, um, left you the cheese plant. <sighs> Thanks. Good one. This is stupid. How about I pay them fellas off and we move your stuff back upstairs? I'm sorry, Nick, but I'm moving into our new house today. Listen, I'm just trying to be positive. You know, get on with things. I know you're going to beat this charge. If I can believe in you, why can't you believe in yourself? Maybe it's because I don't believe in anyone anymore. What do you mean? I'm beginning to think that someone stitched me up. What, the police? How about somebody closer to home? How about Gary's dad? Greg? Why? What's he said? Nothing. All I know is that some dodgy tennis turned up in that tail and I didn't put them there. Well, I'm no great fan of Greg's, but even I don't think he'd get involved in something like this. And he's just a petty thief. And would he really be stupid enough to put money in the till where he works? Well, somebody put them there, didn't he? Well, what are you going to do? Oh, my neck's on the line here. I've got to do something. Well, be careful, Mick. I don't want you getting in any more trouble. All right. Oh, you're open. Why shouldn't we be? Oh, I just thought, you know, with things being as they are... Things? Like me being charged with armed robbery? Getting arrested at my own wedding? Mick? I think it's better if I call back later. And... Yeah, maybe it is. Well... So much for keeping you cool, eh? How is he, then? I don't know. I'm still not getting that much sense out of him, you know. Still not the full shilling, eh? Such a waste. So much rubbish. Yes, they're refusing to shift it, old son. Directed from on high, they say. I had a blasted red tape, if you ask me. Um, listen, David. I know this is short notice, but I've, uh, I've got this really important meeting to go to. And I can't really miss it, and I can't really take Terry with me. So, I've asked everyone else. So I was wondering, you know, uh, well, seeing as you get on so well with him, whether you could, um, look after him for a while? Well, actually, I am a bit tied up myself today. It's Thomas's birthday party this afternoon. Yeah, I know you are, but it'd only be for an hour or so, and I, I can't really leave him on his top, can I? No, no, I suppose not. Uh, all right, well, um... Uh... Just as long as it's for an hour, right? Oh, it will be. You saved me bacon, David. Uh, he can give you an answer shift. You're rubbish, eh? Uh, Terry, David is going to be looking after you. Thanks very much, Dave. Right then, Terence, old son. 
Let's get this straightened out, shall we? Why have we stopped here? You know, we still haven't apologised. What for? For leaving me on my own in the pub last week. Oh, that, um... Sorry. Apology accepted, Mandy. I, uh, I thought we could finish our little chat. Have a quick drink. Put us both in the mood. Look, I'm sorry, I've got to go. Oh, come on, don't be daft. Come on, Mandy! Oh, oh Mandy, are Look, you... Leave me alone! Well, that wasn't very clever, was it? Sorry, Judy calls. Hi, Pat. Hi, Pat. So then, how's the birthday, boy? <laughs> you have plenty of presents. <laughs> yeah, this is from Josh. Yeah. Happy birthday. What do you say, Thomas? Thank you. Thanks, Ooh. babe. You need the pudding. Oh, it's a birthday, isn't it? Oh, face paints. Yay! Yeah, lady, you lot. Oh, you've finished playing with your Power Rangers, eh? Oh, he loves it. Kids love getting buffy. Oh, well, your cat your food looks lovely. Yeah, well, we need a lovely one. Perhaps I've managed to get some pizza. Come on, well, Unfortunately, I had a bit of a run-in with Mick. Yeah, all the tack of her own nusses. God, yeah, hey, is it true? Did you do that old robbery? Well, no, I... he's been accused, but nothing's been proved yet. Oh, I think Thomas wants you to play with him, darling. I'll just go and check on the kids. I'll just see what's up. Gentle giant like him. That's the water's on deep, eh? Just going to change Alice. I didn't expect to see you here, Pat. I didn't think kids' parties we all see. Anything's better than being in the same house as Terry. Oh, so he still has a fruitcake and he's driving me mad. Mm -hmm. That's bad, Believe me, this place is heaven. A positive sanctuary. She's a beauty, isn't she? Yes. <laughs> Young Lee will be thrilled to bits when he finds this in his Christmas stocking. Oh, I told you it was worth braving all those crowds. Do you know, it seems to get worse every year. Yep. Pretty smart machine, eh, Dave? I bet you never had 20 gears on push bikes in your day, eh? Oh, three speeds was the ultimate. Big hill you got off and pushed. <laughs> Kids today don't know they live in, eh? Oh, indeed they do. Mm. Terry, come here. Feast your eyes on this. There you go, lad. What do you think of that? Oh, it's beautiful. It's new. Danny would love this for Christmas. Oh, don't go upsetting yourself, I'm sorry. Is he all right? Oh, still a bit disorientated, I'm afraid. Poor Cyril going on about his wife and kids like that. Bloody mm. awful. Yeah. Right, we'd better get it under lock and key. Mm. Brand new padlock at the ready. Right then, I'll tell him better get you home, haven't we? I've got a party to go to. There we go. That food was lovely, Pat. Too good for the kids. Must have taken the ages. Yeah, well, I wanted to make a real fuss of Thomas, and anyway, I've got plenty of spare time on my hands these days. Thomas some work, though. Like crazy, but I've decided to make the best of it, being at home with the two kids. And it's this little tinker's first Christmas, so it's going to be a really special one. Do you want to get your deckies up then? For what? Deckies? You know, decorations. Oh, yeah, I suppose you're right. You fancy giving me a hand next week? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. And the Christmas one. Thomas, be careful. Thanks. Kids, they love it. Yeah, especially this big kid. Love the paint job, Max. I mean, what can I do? Thomas insisted it. It's his birthday. No, well, you look like Coco the Clown. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Well, any sign of Grandad, yeah? I know, Mum's going to look for him. Hello, darling. No, Alice is a bit tired, darling. She wants her face painted. Give her a little kiss. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid there's been a complaint from one of the parents. Oh, really? What about? Josh. You are? Just said. What he couldn't have done, he can't speak. He can now. Hey, he's just spoke. He said his first word. Oh, it's you. Oh, it's nice to see you too, Mandy. So, you got home all right? 
Well, it looks like it. How's the ankle? It's fine, thanks. Now, if you don't mind. Uh, just a minute, Mandy. That's no way to treat a friend. First you leave me in the pub on my own, and now you're slamming the front door in my face. Please, just go. Be quite something, wouldn't it? If we were to have a tiff in the middle of the street. I wonder what the neighbours would say. Eh? What do you want? Quick cuppa. Chance to finish our little chat. And to check out your angle. Come in. Thanks. Boy! <gasps> Aren't you good, eh? Not even one year old. Nor had he speak. Must take after his mum. Yeah, bright little spark. I'll get it. Well, it's sheer pandemonium in here. Well, it's got to be better than next door with uh, you know who. Well, anything's better than oh. being next door with you know who. David's here. <coughs> he brought a guest. Hope you don't mind. I still can't believe the busy stitch and make up like that. It's cabbage them. It's not moving into the new house now or anything. Yeah, well, if you've got a black face and a record, son, you're easy game. I know, I've been there. Do you reckon he'll go down for it? I don't know. It could be that serious, though, couldn't it? Well, if they've got it in for him, it might end up doing a few years. Is that why you had me light to the busies, then? You what? You know, saying you were with me the afternoon of the robbery when you weren't. Well, like I said, I'm an easy target, aren't I? All right. So, uh. Where were you that afternoon? Hold up, son. You're starting to sound like the busies. What is this? Nothing. I just don't know why you told them that you were with me when you weren't. Because I just had to, all right? What way? Listen, son, there's just some things you don't question, especially your dad. You just accept it, OK? Now, as long as you remember I was with you that afternoon, everything will be sound. Now, just do as your dad tells you, all right? Now, come, Ed. I don't want to be late for work. Oh, you're a right chip of the old block, aren't you? Swearing like a trooper like that? Yeah, I wonder what other interesting words he picked up from Ron. Well, I hope your first word's not going to be a rude one, madam. Yeah, well, if it is, I'll know who she got it from. <laughs> Me? I wonder how long it will be before she does talk. Well, I don't think she'll be as quick off the blocks as this little one. No, I suppose not. Hey, now listen, it doesn't matter how long it takes, Alice. Three years, four, five... But she's our special baby. It'd be worth the wait. Oh, I'll get it. Oh. 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 Hey, hi, Sash. Hi. Uh, David, uh, sorry I got held up. Is Teddy still with you? Don't worry, he's in safe hands. Playing soccer with the kids in the back garden. Oh, thank God for that. Good grief. Thomas! Sorry about that. We're winning 2 nil. You really should get that looked at, you know. Well, I'm fine. Yeah, I'll take that. You sit down. Oof. Right. Put your foot up on there. It'll stop your ankle swelling. Oh, right. <clears throat> right, let's have a look. What are you doing? I'm just going to check it isn't broken. It's badly bruised, Mandy. Let's see. Mm. I'm sorry. Do you think it's all right? I don't know. How does that feel? It's okay. Just okay? And that? How does that feel? Right. Out. But I haven't finished. Oh, I think you have. Just please go. We were getting on so well together. I'll be back tomorrow for my money. Oh, and uh, Mandy, my offer, it still stands. Could be the end to all your problems. Mm. Have a think about it. And let myself out. Hey, love, leave that. We'll go and get a pizza, eh? What, from the pizza parlor? No, from the florist. What do you think? Hey, love, I don't know if that's a good idea, you know. Why not? Because of what happened with Mick. The coppers had me trying to pick him out in an ID parade last week. Yeah, you told the police you didn't know whether it was him one way or the other. But, you know, if I had to put my life on it, I'd say there's no way Mick's an armed robber. 
Well, you saw him that afternoon, Rose. He was in a right paddy. Oh, what? So being in an ark makes you some kind of armed robber, does it? I didn't say that. I just think it might be best if we stayed away for the time being till we know exactly what happened. Yeah? Like everyone stayed clear of us when they found out about Ali being in trouble. Mick was the only person around here who wanted to know us. Least we can do is buy a pizza off him. So, come on, eh? All right. How's the move going? It isn't. Mick's staying here with the police. How come? Because I can't think straight. Because I'm looking at a ten year stretch inside. Because somebody set me up. Mick. Mick, nothing. My life's on the line here. So let's get this sorted now. What, and you reckon I set you up? Dad. Stay out of this, son. All I know is that some dodgy tennis turned up in that tilt and I didn't put them there. And you think it was me? Don't be soft, Mick. Hey. I'm through with being soft. Will you tell me what's going on? Go ahead, then hit me. Beat me up and get a confession. I've got the right coloured skin, haven't I? But you're gonna have to kill me, Mick, because I'm no more guilty than you are. Take it easy, eh, Mick? Oh, you stay out of this, Eddie. You've caused me the trouble as it is. Oh, come on, Mick. This is between me and him. Now stay out of it. Mick, he thought it was me the day of the robbery. Honest. Come on, Ed, let's go. Are you all right? Come and see this. What? Good morning. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> Maybe he's got a job as some sort of delivery boy or something. Well, either that or he's got a job in the circus. <laughs> Nearly finished, David. Yeah, almost done. Right, you can let go of it now. There you are. Good as new, eh? Hmm. No thanks to Terry Sullivan. Now I've got a good man to invoice him for all this. Oh, come on, Max. It was an accident. I can understand a little boy of Thomas's age smashing windows, but a fully grown man? Yeah, a fully grown man in all but mind. You've changed your tune, haven't you? What are you talking about? Well, a few weeks ago, you'd have been all for calling the police and having him arrested for criminal damage or something. Him and his God Squad? That was before I knew the full extent of the problem. The poor chap's head is chock a block with all this religious rubbish. He's been brainwashed. Having him arrested isn't going to do any good at all. What we need to do is try and understand the workings of his mind, get him back on the right track. Deprogram him, as it were. Deprogram him? It's absurd. It sounds like something out of James Bond. Yes, and equally fascinating and exciting. It's a challenge, Max. You haven't seen Terry anywhere, have you? No, we haven't. Oh, no. What now? 
Well, he's gone missing. I thought he might be down here somewhere. You think I'd really have him on my property after yesterday's debacle? Showering everybody with glass, children, babies? Man's a danger to himself and everyone else. Exactly what I've been saying. Yeah, all right. Um, thanks, Max. Haven't you got a restaurant to open? All right, I'll see you later. Oh, and thanks for fixing the window. No problem. Have a good day. Yep. Remember, you've got till Friday. It's either him or me. Oh, dear. Things that bad, are they? She just doesn't understand. I can't dump Terry, that's all. No, of course not. That's a tricky one, isn't it? Can't do right for doing wrong, I suppose. Something like that. They don't suppose you'd give us a hand looking for them, would you? Yes, of course. I haven't got my job today. I'll just dump these things back in my shed and get cleaned up. We'll organise a search party. Sure he can't have gone far. Nice one, David. Morning, Mummy. Oh, you. You sound disappointed. Well, I just wish you wouldn't creep round the place like that. I'm sorry. But we don't want the neighbours knowing our business now, do we? Oh, I suppose not. Oh, I've got something to show you. This came this morning about the payments on the sewing machine. From the finance company. Oh, dear. See, that says I'm still behind. You haven't been paying them, have you? Now, would I lie to you? <laughs> but they keep sending me letters, I've told you. And I said I'd take care of these people, didn't I? I'll sort it out. I know, but it's just this letter. I don't know what to think. Well, it's their mistake, Mandy. Trust me. Look, we're friends. Listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on the phone and I'm going to sort it out. No, I don't know. I don't look best in. Well, I thought you wanted these clowns off your back. Well, yeah, I would like to know where I stand. Right. Come on, then. You can put the kettle on. Right. We'll draw up a checklist of likely places and then eliminate them one by one. Make a strategy, so to speak. Yeah, well, let's just get on with it, eh? Right. Good Lord. I've been robbed. You are? It's a mountain bike. It's gone. Someone's stolen it. Well, you've got a mountain bike. No, 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 it's not mine. It, I'm looking after it for the banks. It's young me's Christmas present. Oh, well, looks like you'll have to make do with the selection box this year. Mr. Crosby! Good Lord, that's Rosie Banks. David! Oh, hiya. Hello there. Hey, just checking you're going to be in, Lisa. I wanted to show our car Lee's new bike. He said he'd buy a bell or something for her. Oh, yes, of course. No problem. Right. I'll see you later, then, when our car gets back. I'll look forward to it. Sure. Why didn't you just tell her the bike had been robbed and phone her busies? I don't think Rosie Banks or the police would be too impressed if they knew the chairman of the Residents' Association had left his shed unlocked. Are you okay, not I only pop next door to fix Max's window. I couldn't have been gone more than 15 minutes. Well, whoever took it will be well gone by now. I reckon you've seen the last of that, mate. Oh, maybe somebody around here saw something. I was to make a few discreet inquiries. Yeah, but we've got to get going, fine, Sally. Oh, I'm sorry, Barry. Change your priorities, I'm afraid. If I don't find that mountain bike by this afternoon, my reputation round here won't be worth a jot. I mean, people on the coast look up to me, for heaven's sake. Yeah, cheers. That's right, Jordash. Yeah, no, I want it done now. Yeah, almost sorted. How's that tea coming on? Yeah? At last. Okay, friend. Apology accepted. And I trust it won't happen again. Yeah, goodbye. Is everything all right? They won't be bothering you again. Thanks. Hey, don't mention it. We're friends, aren't we? Well, more than friends, I hope. Please, Beth's upstairs. Yeah? And what if she wasn't? What do you mean? I mean... You don't want to be stint with Christmas coming up. You don't want these deaths hanging over you. And you can still get out of them. And you know how. Just accept my new easy repayment. I'll sleep with you. Mum! Hello, Mum. Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. What are you doing here? Just talking some business with your mother. Well, you can talk business with me instead, can't you? Beth? Beth, nothing. Mum, just give him his money and get rid of him. Right, I'll just get to it. Nice tea, Mandy. I'm not having you hey. in our tea after you've played us dry. If you want to watch that temper of yours, my girl, it could get you in a lot of trouble. Look, here's the money. 
Would you mind if I count it? Yeah, I do. You can count it outside. And don't you worry, I will. And while you're at it, you can think of us being skint over Christmas. Remember what I said, Mandy. Think about it. What's it going on about? Oh, nothing, nothing. I've come up with a new repayment plan for your mother, haven't I, Mandy? Oh, and what's that? Lower payments and higher interest? Forget it, now get out. Suit yourself. See you around, sweetheart. Oh, excuse, uh, oh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes. I'm sorry to bother you. I just wondered if you well, had to have seen anything. I'm sorry, we're not interested in Wheel of Inns, okay? It's actually, it's not about. Yeah, yeah. What's with the grand rags? Don't look like a dog's dinner day, aren't you? Yeah, I'm off down to the solicitors, you know. Not like you as well. You haven't been knocking about with our Don Corleone from the pizza parlour, have you? Like. You aren't blanks, eh, sir? Don't be daft. I got this this morning, recorded delivery. It's about me mum. Uh, she's still down under, is she? Yeah. You don't reckon there's anything wrong, do you? I don't know, mate. But in my experience, solicitors only ever mean one thing. Bad news, kid. Well, well, thanks, Jimmy. That's just what I wanted to hear, you know. Well, she's no spring chicken, is she, mate? Yeah, it's very much. Hey, Bill and Ben. Don't suppose you've seen Terry wandering round anywhere, have you? Nah, sorry. Go and walk about again, is he? And you better give the men in white coats a ring. Very funny, dickhead. Here, I've got a little job for you. What? A shopping list. And when you come back, I want some change and I want a receipt. All right. Oh, grocery boy now, eh, Jimmy? You're moving up in the world, aren't you? And do us a favour. If you do happen to see Teddy, give us a ring on the mobile and bring him back here. All right. Hey, show him your letter. Yeah. Got this this morning, recorded delivery. It's from my mum's solicitors. What do you reckon? Mm, well, I don't know. Could be anything. Well, including they haven't passed away in that. Well, they wouldn't have found me enough, sir. They've phoned and told you. I don't know, but I don't really know them that well, do I? Well, I wouldn't be expecting the worst, sir. Anyway, get down there and see what it is, eh? Yeah. And don't forget about Terry, all right? Okay. Yeah, all right, will do. Have hey, you told Mandy about this? No, no, I don't want to burden her with it. She's got enough on her plate at the moment. I'll tell you what, I'll come down to the solicitors with you. Got to go that way, haven't I? Get his lordship's groceries. Oh, nice one, Jim. Thanks, mate. No props. Oh, I say. Oh, look, man. Here comes Lord Snooty. He goes on about those windy bits again. All right. All right, Bing. Sorry to interrupt you. I was wondering if you could help me with some inquiries, I think. You are? Concerning the theft of a mountain bicycle from my shed this morning. Hey, hang on, Inspector Clouseau. You're not putting the finger at me, are you? No, 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 no. I'm merely looking for witnesses, trying to piece the thing together. Can't help. Yeah, sorry, Bing, I wasn't on the course this morning. Ah, well, thanks for your time. You've been most cooperative. Oh, I say, just a moment. Bloody cheek of it. See the hell I'll get. No, well, never mind him. I get down to the solicitors and find out what this letter's about. Come on, you jump a taxi. What? I haven't seen nothing. You mean you haven't seen anything? That's what I said, wasn't it? Me neither. Well, if you do happen to see someone suspicious hanging around, please be sure to let me know, won't you? All right, Ben. Morning. <laughs> what was that all about? I don't know. I think someone's rubbed a bike or something. Oh, yeah? Well, no doubt they'll be pinning that on me as well. Hey, Mick, listen, about yesterday, you know, me dad. Hey, look, it's me that should be apologised. I was bang out of order. Tell him I'm sorry, will you? And look, uh, I mean, if he still wants a job here, well, there's one here for him, now. Eh? Oh, Tom, Mick, he'll be made up. You've been dead good to him, like, he won't let you down. Yeah, I know that. Hey, look, I'll see you around, and uh, off to see Marianne. And then I'm more apologies, you know. Yeah, see ya. Yeah, all right. And, uh, Mick, good luck, hey, mate. Cheers. See ya. Bye. God, I feel terrible. Why? <sighs> For me, him being arrested like that. He didn't do it. He might have. No way. How do you know? Because... Because I just do, that's all. Well, why don't we go into town and get him something to cheer him up? I'm skinned. So what? So am I. We'll nick him something. Come on. Yeah. Is it? The door's open. Oh, no, don't say we've had a break-in. Well, there's no sign of the lock being forced. Well, it's probably Barry. It got here before us. No, his car's not here. Oh, well, here it goes. What are you doing? Just seeing who's in there. No, hang on. <coughs> Just in case. After you. Oh. Oh. No one 
in here. Kitchen. Mountain bike? I didn't believe it. Nearly ready. Take a seat next door. Oh, my God, Terry, what are you doing? It's all right. There's loads here for everyone. Look, I'm not having you feeding the 5,000 in my restaurant. Hey, leave me alone. I want to... Ah, ah. Run the cold towel. Ah. Ah. All right. Yeah, you? Survivor. No bags, eh? I haven't come to move him. I see. So, what do you want? What do you think? I want you. But on your terms. All I'm after is some time. Time to get my head sorted. I was willing to give you time, Nick. I was willing to give you the rest of my life. I know that. Oh, listen, babe, this is crazy. You here on your own, me and the kids in the flat. Let's go and talk about it. Let's... Let's go for a walk or something. Let's sort it out. We've talked. We've sorted it out. I know where you stand. You don't want to marry me. You don't even want to live with me. I didn't, I didn't exactly mean it. Listen, maybe I need time to think as well. I'm just as confused about all this as you are. I do want it. Fine. So move in. Marry me, for goodness sake. I can't. I don't want to feel like this. My whole world's been turned upside down. And what about the kids? I don't want to unsettle them. Not with all this going on. Can't you understand that? I do. I do understand. But isn't that all the more reason you and I should be together, helping each other through this? Look, if you still won't change your mind, then there's really nothing left to say. I want to see you again. Maybe it'd be a good idea if we didn't see each other for a couple of days. Give us both time to think. But... I'm sorry, Mick. You know where I stand. Ball's in your court. See ya. Are you sure about this? Quite sure. Look, it's for his own good. At least now I'll get some proper treatment. What about Barry? Well, we tried to phone him, but God knows where he is. We had no option. We can't be expected to look after Terry. We've got a restaurant to run. Well, somehow, I don't think Barry's going to see it that way. Right. Sit down, Jim. There we are. Hey, listen, mate. What can I say? I'm really sorry. Look, you're in shock. Shall I say they've got a brandy? Oh, yeah. You better make it champagne. You what? I'm rich. Okay, let's see. I thought I was bad. Your man snuffed him, not even think about a few lousy quid. Oh, well, she isn't dead. You what? Well, she's staying in Australia. She sold her house in Liverpool and she gave me the money. <laughs> 45,000 pounds. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Millionaire, mate. <laughs> 45 grand. <laughs> My mate, he's a millionaire! <laughs> Sin! <laughs> Joy with your quest. No, he still hasn't turned up. What about you? Found your bike? No, a complete blank, I'm afraid. Just looking around for a few clues. Looks like I'll have to report it to the police after all. Well, I'm going to have a look around the shop, so uh, I'll see you later, eh? Right, yes, good luck. And uh, if you do see the bike. Right. Hey, David. Oh, Rosie. Uh, our car should be back soon. Still okay if we come round for a nose at the bike? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But, um, could you possibly give me a couple of hours? Uh, I need to pop into the city centre in the spot of the Christmas shop. Oh, nice one. 
Get into the festive mood after all, eh? Yes, goodwill to all men and uh, all that. Yeah. Uh, Rosie, uh, by the way, um, just out of curiosity, uh, where exactly did you buy Lee's splendid mountain bicycle? Come on, Jimmy, let's get a couple of bottles of that bubbly crack open. Right this way, your richness. Just follow me, eh? <laughs> Jimmy! Oh, look down to his master's voice. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen Terry yet? Oh, Zilch boss said so I'm low, haven't we, Kenny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose we just have to hang around then. Yeah. Well, what are you two doing there? Well, should you tell them what you're like? Oh, come on, what is it? Feast your eyes on that little lot. Bloody hell, 45 now! Who's that off? From his ma, and she isn't even brown bread. Congratulations, sir. Nice one, boss. Cheers. We are going to crack open a couple of bottles of the Al Bubbly. That's all right for you. Oh, and this as long as you pay for it. And oh, until yeah. we get them groceries down to the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A spot of light refreshment? You are. Champagne. I've just been given £45,000. What? Are you serious? Yeah, it's off me, ma'am, look. All right, you're off. As long as you're buying. Right this way, my dear. Here we go. Hey. Hey, Mick. It's fancy your baby. What now? Yeah. I've had some good news. My mum's all right, but she sold the house and gave me the money. 45k. You what? Straight up. Coach you, mate. Ah, oh, nice one, sir. I made up for you, mate. Oh, come on, do you fancy it or what? Ah, some other time, mate, when I'm in a better mood. Yeah, sure, all right, mate. I'll see you later. Yeah, enjoy yourself, mate. Kids, you have one boss or what? Yeah, go ahead, Jim. It's just a small one, please. So, have you told Mandy you got news yet? No, I was thinking of whizzing around there later on with some champagne and surprised her, you know. Oh, isn't he romantic, eh? So, any idea what you're going to do with all that lovely one guy? Oh, well, I haven't really thought about it yet, mate. Yeah, well, sky's the limit, you know. World's your oyster, know what I mean, mate? Yeah, I suppose it is. God, I know what I'd do. I'd pay off the mortgage and just keep enough by for a nice holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just think so. You could go out and buy an house just like that, mate. Mm. Yeah, I suppose I could, couldn't I? Not a bad Christmas present to yourself, eh? Or to someone else. Oh, aye, 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 aye. What's all this? Well, I was just thinking if I was going to go and buy a house, I might as well buy a house I know. Mandy's. That way Ed and the girls can stay for as long as they like. I want to suppose you might just, er, uh, be moving in yourself, like? Well, it would be my house, wouldn't it? Yeah, very cosy. What's he like? Oh, <laughs> that's lovely. It'd be a lovely surprise for Mandy and the girls for Christmas. Mm, mm. Not at all. Lucky oh. cow. Well, do you reckon we could keep it a secret until then? Well, I won't take much bribing. My lips are sealed. Mooms the word. <laughs> yeah. I'll keep your mouth shut. Well, here's to our little secret and Mandy's crimbo present. Yeah. I'll drink to that. Cheers. 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 Nice one. Mm. Hello? Yeah? Oh, right. Right. Yeah, thanks very much. I'll be down there right away, yeah. Okay, bye. Everything all right, boss? That was the busies. They found Sally. He's in some kind of trouble. Better get down there. This fella cracks me up. He's off his head, you know. That funny, isn't he? Yeah, but listen, guys, he shouldn't be spending any money on me, mate. Oh, it's only a few quid. and saving up for ages. You know, I'm a mate, aren't you? <laughs> and you thought I needed cheering up, then? Well, I don't like seeing you all sad and that. I know you've done nothing wrong. It's not fair. Tell me about it. So, uh, how'd that go with Marianne? <sighs> I don't know whether it's on or it's off. I don't know whether I'm coming or going, but... Oh, I'm sorry, man. Hey, listen, it's not your fault. And hey, remember to tell you our fella. I want to see him behind this counter first thing tomorrow. Yeah, sound. I'll see you later. Yeah, see you. Hey, Gaz. Thanks for the present, mate. Ah. Oh. So you found your quarry then? I didn't. Max and Penny did. Come on, you don't know, sir. No, it's... Well, it'll be all right. Let's get you inside, eh? What happened to his hand? Uh, it's just a small bin. Max and Penny found him puking in the restaurant this morning. That's extraordinary. He bothered my keys to get in. Penny very kindly called the police, tried to get him done for breaking it. Really? Unfortunately, my keys weren't the only thing he borrowed. You'll find your mountain bike in the back of the front here. Oh, no. I've just bought a replacement. Cost me 200 quid. Sorry, David, not looking to do about it. Oh. oh, Barry, give him a couple of paracetamol of his hands, I think. Yeah, thanks, David. <sighs> oh, Rosie! Oh, hiya, Dave! Right, 
One mountain bike awaiting inspection, ready when you are. Oh, another time, we do. Now, I'm just going for a lie down. Oh, I've had a bit too much champagne. Afternoon drinking almost does this to me. But, but I've I'm got sorry, to... I'll see you later. Tra. Afternoon, David. Max! Ah, just the man I wanted to see. Oh, yeah. Ah, listen. Have you by any chance had any thoughts on what to get Thomas for Christmas? Well, no, not really. We've only just got his birthday out of the way. Well, I think I might have just the thing for him. Yeah. But there was no need to phone the police, was there? There was every need. Your friend's out of control, Barry. He's a danger to himself and to other people. Well, why didn't you call me? I had to come and got him. I tried, but I couldn't track you down. Look, what happens next time he runs away? What happens if it's someone else he burns? What then? I can look after him. I know I can. I know he's your friend, Barry, but you can't give him the proper care and attention that he needs. You've got to do the right thing. Which is? Hand him over to the authorities. Let them take care of him. No chance. I'm never letting him end up in a loony bin somewhere. Not Terry. Very well. Suit yourself. Well, where are you going? Upstairs to pack. Look, I meant what I said, Barry. Either Terry goes or I do. Oh, Penny, don't be... Brookside The Women features classic clips from the first 12 years of Brookside, together with brand new material, and it's out now in the shops. Older cold cuts are out here. Just get this lot clear before Bing gets back. And why me, like? Because you're the only one round here who's qualified to move crap, aren't you? And get me car cleaned out afterwards as well. All right, Jimmy. Oh, yes, boss. Three bin bags full, boss. So, David decided to give up his one-man fight against the wheelie bins, eh? Seen sense? No, I am. I'm sick of living next door to a rubbish dump. Oh, I see. So, where's David now? He's gone out. And by the time he comes back, all his crap will be gone. Well, I must say, I won't be sorry to see the back of it. Oh, Max, I was hoping to catch you. Oh, morning, Penny. Hi, I was just wondering if you knew the number of a decent local hotel. Hotel? Why? Well, it's getting a bit overcrowded at number five. I could do with a break. Right, well, I'll see what I can dig out for you. Oh, come on, Pen. I'll probably be needing it for tonight. I still can't believe it. Well, it's a lot of money, miss. Yeah, I was starting to think that someone was playing a trick on me, you know, winding me up and that. So I phoned me mum in Australia last night. And? And I'm rich. She's done all this for me. Yeah, you deserve it, sir. I made up for you. Yeah, she said she wants me to have my own place. I suppose it's because she couldn't give me a proper home when I was born. You know, she just wants to make it up to me. Oh, nice one. So, uh, is that what you're going to do, like, buy a house? Yeah, well, it's going to be more than just a house, isn't it? It's going to be my home. And Mandy's, I hope. Oh, well, didn't waste much time there, did you? Nah, well, you know how things are. Uh, and everything had been going so well with it, and I've decided to buy the house off the charity. So Mandy and the kids can have somewhere to stay forever. And you're moving in as well, like? Yeah, well, it's my house. I mean, be daft not to. Hmm? And Mandy's happy with that, is she? Eh, uh, well, she doesn't know about it at the moment, you know. Well, I'm gonna surprise her for Chrissy, aren't I? I see. So, uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't say anything until then. No sweat, mate. Safe with me. Yeah. Tell you what, I can't wait to see her face. <laughs> Should be quite something, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, Mick. What? Well, there's me babbling on about all my good luck and you're going through hell. Hey, don't be worried about me, sir. I'll sort this mess out. I'll clear my name, get my life back together. Yeah, well, good on you, mate. And like I said, if you ever need anything, I mean, I can lend you a few bob if you like. Yes, and but you hold on to your money. You'll be needing it. <sighs> All right, mate. I'll see you later. Yeah, anyway. take it easy. Tell her, mate. All right, mate. All right, soon, but... All right. Fair enough. Look, about... Hey, no sweat, Mick. I know what you're going through. No hard feelings, eh, mate? No. No hard feelings. Ah, Max. Hi. Go 
good news. It seems that the powers that be have finally relented and cleared my rubbish. Oh, well, now that is good news. A victory for the little man, I call it. Make the stuffed shirt sit up and notice. Show me can't all be steamrolled. That's what made this country what it is, you know? Uh, yes, quite. Uh, so, anyway, tell me, did you get your money back on the bike? No, decided to keep it. Oh, right. Well, for yourself? No, for Jean. Jean? A mountain bike? Yes. She's always saying she needs more exercise. Make an ideal Christmas present. All that fresh air will do her a power of good. All I've got to do is keep her out of the shed so I don't spoil the surprise. Oh, well, it'll be a surprise, all right. Oh, yes. While I remember, have you got any more of those old tins of paint in that shed of yours? Yes, I mean, there's a couple knocking around in there somewhere. Why? Oh, it's time I got the round table Christmas sleigh out of hibernation and give it a lick of paint. We start collecting next week. Good man. Great. Well, look, I'll come round and give you a hand later, if you like. Oh, thanks. Be appreciated. Right. I'd better get going. See you later. Morning, gentlemen. Morning, sir, Matt. Hello there. Ah, uh, Max, just the fellow I wanted to see. Oh, yes. Uh, how do I go about joining your residence association? What, you mean the BRA? Oh, yeah, the BRA, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Sandbad, but membership of the BRA is exclusive to residents of the close. Yeah, I know that. That's why I want to join. And you don't live on the close? Yeah, not at the moment, but I've had a windfall, you see, and, uh, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, because you used to work in the estate agency game, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, well, how quick do you reckon I can get a mortgage? Well, I mean, that depends on your income, cost of property, survey, size of deposit. Mm. And what if I wanted to put 40 grand down on number 10 there? 40 grand? Yeah. Good grief, man. Are you serious? Yeah, my mum sold the house and gave me the money. Really? That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, you want to buy number 10? Yeah, well, it's still on the market, isn't it? So do you reckon I'll have a problem, right? Well, with that size of deposit, I shouldn't think so. Ah, so, Maxie, that's just what I wanted to hear. And listen, can we keep it to ourselves for now? Because I want it to be a surprise for Mandy for Crimbo, you know. Sure. Yes, yes, of course, just between the three of us. Right. Just think, we'll soon be neighbours, eh? All in bra together, plenty of uplift and support, eh? <laughs> Can't wait. Well, see you later. Oh, there goes the neighbourhood. See you later. Mm. David? Have you seen this? It's that note of Simon. The burying him in Manchester on Tuesday. Church service, eh? And it'll be buried on consecrated ground as well, no doubt. Has Terry seen this? It was him who found it. He'd have been halfway to Manchester by now if I hadn't stopped him. I see. Where is he now? He's up on his bedroom. He kept babbling on about seeing Simon again. I didn't know what to do. Well, maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea if he was to see him again. You what? Well, once he finally realises that his friend Simon is no longer of this world, it may help to end this morbid fascination of his and restore his state of mind. What you mean I might sort his head out? Well, it's worth a try. Anything is. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I fancy going on my own. You know, there might be all kinds of weirdos there. You won't be on your own, son. I'll come with you. We'll both keep an eye on Terry. Oh, thanks, David. Appreciate that. No problem. And don't worry. We'll get your friend sorted out. All right. All right, big man. How's it going? Oh, not so bad, not so bad. Keep me nose clean, know what I mean? Yeah, I'll tell you what. Do us one of those Louisiana special. Yeah, I'll do that, Craig. You get off me. All right, Sam. Wish my boss was more like you, Mick. Hey, you're onto a good thing working in this place, Jim. Hey, Jimmy, give it a rest, will you? Well, listen, uh, Greg, I might need you to cover for me for a couple of afternoons next week. I've got to see solicitors and that, you know? Yeah, sure, OK, no problem. What a mess, eh? Who would believe it? Me and our brother. Well, I thought I might buy us a Chinese. <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? I don't think I can ever eat again. Hey, listen, you'll be starving later on. Just wait and see. Well, how are you going to afford a Chinese? Well, I told you it's Friday. It's window money day. I know what you're up to. Do you? Yeah. You're digging into what little savings you've got, trying to take our minds off the stupid mess I've got us into. No, oh, right. No, no, look, it's just a few, Bob. I know, but you, you really shouldn't. Oh, look, I don't want to hear any more about it. Right, I better get out of my round and finish collecting. Otherwise, there'll be no chow mein for us. <laughs> I'll see you later. Ta-da. See you later. Ta Bye. Thanks for the fry-up. You're welcome. He shouldn't be spending his money on his life, though. I know, but if it makes him happy. Yeah, but... He can't afford it, Beth. We shouldn't be encouraging him. I mean, the last thing I want is for Simba to end up in debt as well. Mm, I think he's got more sense than that. I mean, more sense than me. Oh, what's he forgotten now? This is Joel Dash. Yeah? I'm not sending him to the hospital. And I'm not spending another night under the same roof as Terry. I'm sorry. Just a couple more days, Pat. No. Come on, Ben. 
Terry's not a bad sort. He's just a bit mixed up, that's all. Yeah, and that's from a medical man as well. I didn't realise you were a psychiatrist as well as a pharmacist, David. You don't have to be a psychiatrist to realise that all Terry needs is a little care and understanding. Yeah, dead right. Barry's got a point. Why send the poor chap to hospital when he can be looked after at home by friends? Care in the community, that's what it's about. All right, David. As you're so fond of Terry, why don't you have him to stay with you and Jean for a while? Ah, well... Hey, that's not a bad idea, that. I mean, Terry's got a real soft spot for you, hasn't he? Y yes, but you see... See, it'd only be for one night. If we could get it all sorted out tomorrow, then Penny wouldn't have to go anywhere, would she? David? Just the one night. I promise. Oh, very well, but uh, I'll have to OK it with Jean first. David, you're a star. Let's hope Jean thinks so. Right, well, uh, I'll be back later. OK. Thanks again, David. There are, then. That's all sorted, isn't it? Not quite. You are? Well, let's just say that this little episode's opened my eyes. How do you mean? I mean that I'm not sure our relationship's quite what I thought it was. Bailiffs. What, let us, Mum? Sorry, love. Really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Must be my lucky day, eh, Mick? Lucky days. What a day, eh? I heard about you being charged, mate. What can I say? Yeah. Listen, Jimmy. Tell me to mind my own business if you want. Um, all these stories are about prison. Are they true? <sighs> nah. But uh, just don't bend down for the soap in the showers. Yeah. That would cross me mind. And what's all this? After a few tips from an old black, are you? I just want to know what to expect if, uh, if the worst comes to the worst. Well, it's no doddle, mate, but... Well, once you get used to the ropes, you know. A few dodges, a few shortcuts. You'll be one away. Time will fly by. Cut the crap, Jimmy. You what? I want to know how it really is. I want to know what it's like to do time. Are you sure? I need to know. All right. I'll tell you what it's really like. Your first stretch, mate. That's the hardest. I mean, for a kid, it's bad, but... Well, for fellas our age... I've seen it finish him. You see... It takes a lot of getting used to. You don't know who's who. What's what. Gotta be careful. Don't look at the wrong person the wrong way. Gotta keep your head down. For months. Years. Tell you another score. And then what? You got your routine. Working, eating, your hobbies. Talking the same old crap to the same old no marks day after day. It's dull. Boredom. But you get into it. You've got to. To survive. But one thing never changes. What? What's that? Well, you're there, standing still. All the world out here is passing you by. Your family. Friends. Even next door's cat. They're all getting on with it. While you're inside, stewing in your own juice. Good, Jimmy. I couldn't handle that. Come ahead, Mick. I got through it, didn't I? Missing my kids growing up. Not seeing them for weeks on end. Can't do it. Hey, you 
Come on, hasn't even got to court yet, has he? Still early days, Mick. You didn't do it, did you? Someone's a matter of God. I've got it in for me. I'm going down to you. It says the sewing machine repayments haven't been paid for months. Why can't you see that he's ripping you off? Well, what should we do? God knows. I mean, you can't even earn any extra money from your sewing anymore. Sorry. We're gonna have to get McGuire off our backs. But how? I don't know. How much do you owe him? Mum, how much? Over three thousand pounds. Well, how did you manage that? Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. I couldn't help it. I mean, it was only two thousand to begin with, but it just got out of hand. I mean, it yeah, was one thing. Yeah, but three thousand pounds, Mum. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, like you tell me everything. Oh, and what do you mean by that? I mean, I saw your bank statement in your room this morning. Well, what were you doing going through my things? It was lying on your floor. Why didn't you tell me you were eighteen hundred pounds overdrawn? Well, I didn't want to worry you, did I? Exactly. It's just like I don't want to worry you. Yes, but Mum, the difference is I got the money from a bank. You got it from a loan shark. I wasn't as stupid. Oh, thank you, Beth. Thank you very much. I mean, even my own daughter thinks I'm stupid. No, I don't. I don't mean it. No, that. you're right, you're right. I am stupid. And it's up to me to get us out of this mess. Well, it's very good of you to help out, David. Not at all. Always willing to lend a hand for a worthy cause. Hmm. This thing seems better. Oh, damn, look, it's gone under the arm. I just need stitching back on, that's all. Yeah. Why don't you pop over to Mrs. Jordash with it? No, I, I wouldn't want to bother her. Nonsense, she wouldn't mind. It won't take a minute with that machine of hers. She'll probably do it while you wait. You sure? Yes, of course. Salt of the earth, that woman. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take it over later. Good. Well, look, uh, give us a hand in the meantime with this. I'll get started on the brown. Oh, all right. Uh... So... <coughs> Max, have you given yourself a target with this fundraising? No, not really. I just hope we can beat last year's total. Ah, good man. Want to get every last penny, eh? Mm. You know, I think young Alice would be pretty proud of her dad. Sorry? I take it you are collecting for Down syndrome. Well, uh, no. Ah. Not your decision, eh? Out of your hands? Uh, no, not strictly speaking. Um, no, uh, Patricia and I decided that uh, we wouldn't let our personal situation obscure the fact there are hundreds of equally worthy causes out there. We don't want to wear her illness like a badge. We don't need to. No, we feel that Alice has got what money can never buy. All the love and care she'll ever need. Admirable sentiments, Max, but I'm sure there are an awful lot of Dan's children out there who aren't in such a fortunate position as young Alice. Those are the children I thought you'd be collecting for. Hi. How you doing? Been better. Me too. I've missed you. Yeah, me you. Thinking time over. Time to talk. I bet come in. Um, Mum, you've got a visitor. Oh. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. Oh, it's no problem. No, it's just um, David suggested I, I bring this round. See, it's gone under the arms. And, um, well, he told me that you had a sewing machine. Um, um, it's, it's been taken for repair, hasn't it, Mum? Yes, that's right. Um, I mean, we won't have it back after Christmas. Oh, really? That long? Yeah, because it needs a new motor. Right. Oh, well, <laughs> not to worry, eh? Well, uh, perhaps it's time we bought ourselves a new Santa costume. <laughs> right. Well, I'll see myself out. Bye. Bye now. See you. God, how embarrassing. <sighs> Mum, 
Mum, we can't go on like this. I'm frightened to even answer the door. I've been thinking anyway. What about? About earning some more money. How? By getting a full-time job. I'm sure they take me on at the restaurant. What about university? Well, I'll have to take a year out, won't I? No. Mum, I can finish my course any time. Beth, no. Well, I'm going to have to. There's no other way out of this mess, is there? Look, don't do anything rash, love. I'll, um, I'll think of something. Set him up. All right. No, Danny said you'd be here. Do you want one? No, sir. I'm very early for me. Well, what can I do for you? Oh, it's not one you can do for me. It's one you can do for Mick. You know, your mate. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've just been having a little talk with him. You weren't telling any tales, were you? Oh, no, no tales. Not my style. He wanted to know what it's like being locked up in the Nick. Because he's not been there before. Like you and me have. And what did you tell him? I told him the truth. I told him it was crap. I told him it was full of scum, full of nonsense. I told him he'd probably have the crap beaten out of him. How he wouldn't be able to look his kids in the eyes when they come to see him. I told him everything. And do you know what he did? Hmm? He cried. Yeah. Your mate, Mick, cried. Like a baby. And you came here to tell me that? No. I came here to tell you that an innocent man is going to jail. An innocent man that probably won't last two weeks inside before he cracks up. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Well, you've done time, haven't you? You can handle it. We both know Mick can't. You send him down and you kill him. And I'll come after you. Hey, what's with the sudden show of bravery? Mick's no big mate of yours. He was slagging you off. Yeah. But he's one of us, isn't he? An ordinary working-class bloke. And you don't crap on one of your own. I'm sorry about me, but it's not my problem. And I ain't going back inside for no one. You blow me up, Jimmy. And I'll have you. Yeah, you were right. Me and the kids should have moved in here like we were supposed to. So why didn't you? Because <sighs> I wasn't thinking straight. I was worried that moving wouldn't settle the kids. I didn't want any more upset. I mean, they've been through enough already, you know, seeing me get arrested like that. So, why the sudden change of heart? I want us all to be together. That's all I've ever wanted. I mean, look at this place. It's still our dream house, isn't it? Yeah. Look at this garden. Leo and Gemma are going to love it. I mean, this is where we should all be. Especially the kids. I mean, you know, if the worst comes to the worst. It won't. No, but... I mean, if it does, and I do have to go away, well, at least I know the kids will have a home here, with you. With me? Yeah. I mean, there's no one else in the world I'd rather have to look after them than you. I know they'll be safe here. Hold on, Nick. Are you sure that's what Leo and Gemma would want? Of course. They think the world of you. But Josie's their mother, Mick, not me. Surely she... Hey, Josie stopped being the mother when she walked out on me. OK, but what about their grandparents in Wales? What about them? Well, Leo and Gemma might be better off with them. No way. The kids stay in Liverpool. Well, even if the unthinkable does happen and you do go to prison. No. You say to me, you don't want the kids? I'm saying I don't know if I could cope. We were five minutes away from being the stepmother. We were getting married. I know, but I was marrying you, Mick, not the kids. This is different. I can't believe this. Mick, I really love Leo and Gemma, but I don't know if I could be a mother to them, not on my own. I don't know if I'd be any good without you around. So, I get stuck away and you just dump them just like that? It's not like that. Try and see it from my point of view. Oh, yeah, I certainly can. We can forget it, Marianne. Because me, Leo and Gemma, we come as a package. So you can either have all of us or you have none of us.
A Channel 4 book entitled Brookside, Life in the Close is out now in most bookshops priced £14.99. Flattery may get you everywhere, but bribery is a whole different ballgame, as Ellen discovers after the break. a few more bits and pieces in there, dear. Hand them over. Oh, for goodness sake. Terry was a bit low on the underwear. Right, I thought we could just rinse a few things through for him, that's all. Would you like me to iron his straight jacket while I'm about Jean, it? Please. I am sorry, but it's beyond me what he's doing here in the first place. He had place. nowhere else to go. This is our home, not some halfway house for mental misfits. I know, but Barry Grant virtually embarrassed me into bringing him here. Well, I wish he hadn't. But Mary's ill, he needs help. Which I'm trying to give you. Professional help. Look, let's just get this blasted funeral over first, shall we, please? About how they dress the funerals up here, is it? It is for this one, yeah. I'm not mourning that nut job, Simon. How long are you going to be? As long as it takes. To do what? To watch every last sod of earth cover St. Simon's coffin and convince Terry that he's gone for good. Well, when you've done all that, do you think you could manage an appearance at the restaurant? As long as Terry's all right, yeah. And what if he isn't? I don't know. Well, what about tomorrow and the day after that? I've just said I don't know, OK? What if Terry's never all right? Does everything else just have to grind to a halt? Look, he's me mate. I'm worried about him. Don't I know it. Meaning? Nothing. We've got a business to run, that's all. Yeah, but this isn't just about business, is it? No. Hey, who got you ready? All right, son. Get off somewhere, posh? No, I've just been the barristers. Oh, right, yeah, so how's it all going? Crap. I've been told I should uh, be prepared for the worst. Oh, really? Yeah, well, the geezer thinks I'm guilty, doesn't he? Oh, come on. Why should he think that? Well, why shouldn't he? I'm just another villain coming the innocent, aren't I? Oh, I think you're being a little bit paranoid, you know, mate. I think I'm entitled under the circumstances, Sim, don't you? Yeah, well, I suppose so. Anyway, look, who's got you all done up like a dog's dinner? Yeah, well, I'm off down to the building society to get this mortgage sorted out. Oh, so it's full steam ahead then? Yeah, well, touch wood. Yeah, made up for you, mate. Yeah, can't wait to see Mandy's face. <laughs> you won't have to. Say not. <laughs> What's this? You two trying to give Liverpool a good name? No, uh, well, Mick's just been down to see his brief. Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. Um, so what's your excuse? Well, nothing. I mean, there's no crime. He's getting spruced up now and again, is he? Want to go window cleaning? Well, don't be soft. I'm off out. Where? Town. What for? Well, don't be nosy. What's up with him? Hey, don't ask me. Look, I'll catch you later. All right, mate. See ya. And there. Uh, good luck. Good luck for what? Nothing. Nothing at all. All right. OK, please yourself. All right. Well, I'd better get off. My cab's here. Since when did you have cab money? Since now. All right. Ta-da. I still think a black tie would have been more appropriate. Come on, son. Let's find a seat, yes. Shouldn't have much trouble doing that. So much for the prophet and his faithful following. Yeah. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. Got a hand? Yeah, grab a tea towel. 
I've just saw Sinbad at the shops in a suit. Oh, yeah, how come? I don't know. As soon as I appeared, he ran a mile. Maybe he's got another woman. Oh, don't say that. I'm only joking. Well, you couldn't blame him. Oh, don't be stupid. I must be sick of hearing me moaning on about not making ends meet. Of course it's not. Well, I don't know so much. Anyway, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Sorry? <sighs> Look, I've decided it's about time I start to put my weight around here, instead of leaving you scraping for the three of us. But we've been through, through all, all this. Yeah, I know. And where's talking got us? Nowhere. Oh, my God, what have you done? I've made sure that we're going to be okay this Christmas. And every Christmas from now on. Beth? I'm going to go full-time at the restaurant. No. Look, I've talked it through with my tutors, and they said that I've got more than sufficient grounds to defer for up to a year. No. What more? I said no! Well, why not? Because... Look, you know why not, because... You, you can't waste what's up here. You you leave the waiting on and the and the washing up to the to the likes of me, the numbskulls. Yeah, well, it's too late. I've already sorted it with Barry Grant. Well, you'll have to unsort it. No. Look, I'm not having it, Beth. Mum! Look, there's no other option unless you can come up with a bed ride in. That's the way it's going to have to be, isn't it? Priestess? God only knows. Oh, come on, let's get going, eh? Teddy! All right. Hey, how did it go this morning? Don't ask. Why? What happened? Well, I wasn't expecting a pep talk. and came off feeling like O.G. Simpson. Oh, well, how does he rate your chances? Somewhere between laughable and non-existent. Oh, I'm sorry, Mick. Nah, don't be. There's nothing you can do about it, is there? No. I'll tell you one thing, though. Give me a kick up the jacks as far as my future's concerned. How do you mean? Well, if I'm going to have any sort of a life after prison, I need to keep this place open. Which means we're getting someone to run the place while I'm on holiday. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, so, I was wondering, like, would you be interested? Well, I couldn't. Well, I'd help you get your head around. It's not that complicated. No, really, Mick, I couldn't. Well, why not? Because, um, I'm getting off. Hey? Well, I don't know if our Gary's mentioned it, like, but the quack reckons our Carol's on the mend. And I was thinking of renting a caravan, you know, in Wales or somewhere, take the pair of them up there. Well, just for a short break, like? Well, I thought I might stick around, you know, see what the score is on the job front. Even though there's a good job for you here? If me and Carol are going to patch things up, you know, we've got to have a change of scenery. Yeah, right. So, uh, well, how much notice can you work? Well, I don't know. As soon as she's back on her feet, you know, we'll be off. Fair enough. I'm sorry, Mick. Ah, look, don't be... I hope it works out for you. You deserve it. Excuse me. Could I possibly have a minute of your time? Yeah, well, we're in a bit of a rush, Father. Reverend, actually. Although I am here as a father. Simon's. Who's Simon's dad? I hope you don't mind me asking, but uh, who exactly are you? We all knew your son. Were you friends of his? Not exactly. I was. I take it you were something to do with this cult he got mixed up in? I was. He was my life. This is Terry Sullivan. Pleased to meet you, Reverend. He and Simon were firm friends. You don't half look like him. A bit older like. So, were you a member of this cult? Your lad brainwashed him. Who are you? He blew up my house. Ah, church. I'm sorry. We knew nothing about Simon's activities. Nothing at all. Not until when I went to identify the body. 
The police filled in a lot of the blanks. As far as we knew, he was still a student. In his final year. That was his excuse for not visiting very often. His workload. He was meant to be studying for a degree in theology. I had hoped he'd follow in my footsteps. I suppose he did, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> I'll be all right with me, Todd, you know, Jean. You got back to your mates. No, it's all right. We're not due to start for a couple of minutes yet. Please yourself. Hey, did you hear about old Josh last week? No. Said his first word. Oh, what did he say? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> made a holy show me into your past. I can imagine. Good job, little Alice, wasn't here, Wigan? Mm -hmm. oh, she's marvellous, though, isn't she? The way she's coping. Patricia, fantastic. Still, must help having Grandma next door. Mm -hmm. What well, if Grandma was ever allowed to do anything? I'm oh, sorry if I... No, 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 it's all right. It's just that Max and Patricia are hell-bent on proving that they can cope without help from anyone. So you imagine those put out there? Well, not exactly, but it would be nice to feel useful occasionally. Not to let you do anything. Max even poo-pooed David's suggestion that the round table collect for downs this year. Well, if you want to do something like that, why don't you have a go yourselves? But after this, look at the pacemakers cranked up. You'll be able to raise a mint. Think of that. All parts of the service, Jean. Quick burst, I think. I think I'll join you. Old Crossstage playing up again. So, now we've laid the Messiah of Manchester for the rest. What happens to Terry? See, the thing is, Jean's none too ecstatic about his continued presence in the bungalow. Well, don't worry, I'll think of something. Come on. Right. Good job this place is called Grants, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Otherwise, I forget who my partner is altogether. Perhaps Lord Lucan's would have been a better name. <laughs> I don't know. How come we get to do all the dirty work while the elusive Barry gets to make all the decisions? Don't ask me. If the Scarlet Pimpernel doesn't start showing his face around here soon, this could be the end of a beautiful partnership. Where's he gone now? Well, I don't think he followed us in. Oh, no. Teddy! Good grief! Just leave him there. You'll kill yourself, man! Teddy! I've got the busies! No, Teddy, no! Stay where you are! Oh, I'm not about to give up! Is... Oh, sound. He reckons he'll be able to fix me with a ball and chain. Dear cheap. Kids okay? Fine, thanks. That's why I came round, really. I thought I could go Christmas shopping with them. Maybe take Gemma to the grotto. Thanks, uh, but I'm taking them myself tomorrow. I didn't think you'd have time. For my own kids? I didn't mean it like that. Anyway, what would your plan have been? Dump them with Santa's little helper for an hour while you go looking for uh, cushion covers? Please, Mick, I... You what? I just thought I could help out. What is this? The schizo show? The other day you wanted shut of them, and now it's back to being super mum again. I didn't want shut of anyone. That's what it sounded like to me. How could you think that? I just want what's best for all of us. What's best for you, you mean? You haven't listened to a word I've said, have you? Well, great. You just make it up as you go along. That's fine by me. So, that's a sponsored walk, a dance marathon, and a bungee jump. <laughs> Any more suggestions? 
What's going on? You look like you've just been to a funeral. I have. Aren't you supposed to be working? Yeah, sorry. Mm. How about right, the I'll get on to the busies, see if I can track them down, eh? Right. To be honest, Mr. Lowe, I don't think a yard of ale race is quite what we're after. Now, any more offers? I'm having a vote over doing something for charity over Christmas. Really? Yeah, for kids like your Alice. It was my idea, actually. Oh, excellent. Well done, Beverly. Couldn't we possibly do something a little more cultured? Uh, how about a, a Gilbert and Sullivan recital? Gilbert and Sullivan? That should be into something more cultured. Perhaps a little highbrow for general consumption. What's Gilbert and Sullivan's eyebrows got to do with anything? I don't think you've quite got the point. Well, how about a Christmas panto? That'd be a laugh. Well, why not throw your head in the ring? Eh? It's all right. Uh, Beverly here has had something of a brainwave. Get lost with you, Dave. A Christmas pantomime. A panto? What, what does everybody think? Yeah, yeah. Right, let's put it to the vote. All those in favour of a pantomime. Carried. Almost unanimously. Oh, hello. Could I speak to Mr. Maguire, please? Hi, it's, it's Mandy Jordash here. I, I need to speak to you. No, no, could you call round here? Today, if you like. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks, bye. God almighty! What did you do that for? Oh, I couldn't resist, sorry. Oh, it's bloody stupid. All right, sorry. Who are you on the blower to? Um, doctor. Why, what's up? Need a repeat prescription. What for? Migraine tablets. I didn't know you had migraines. Well, I do. I'm not having one now, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, I'll come out to see if you fancy going out for your tea, that's all. Oh, sorry, my head's throbbing. Um, anyway, haven't you got better things to be spending your money on? Yeah, I suppose I have. Right, i better go. Right. Bye. Do I mind if I head home in a minute, do you, dear? No. I feel like the Grim Reaper in this outfit. I'm not surprised after the day you've had. I'll cook, shall I? Oh, that'd be nice. Right, I'm off. Oh, bye. Um, about this panto thing, what would it be my idea and everything? Uh, any chance for part? We are going to audition on Friday. All comers welcome. Great. Let's get practicing my thigh slap and then, hadn't I? Oh, see ya. <laughs> right, I'll get going. I'll see you at home. OK, bye. Excuse me, Major. Audrey. Hello. Um, Dad couldn't make it. I'm still waiting, you know. Sorry? For you to let your fingers do the talking. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not... I thought you'd have phoned by now. Did you lose my number? No, no, no. I... Don't worry. The offer still stands. Thank you very much, but um, actually, um, things are back on an even keel. You've uh, cured your little private problem, then? N not exactly, but, um, look, I, I've got to cook tonight, so I better be off. What's on the menu? Oysters. <laughs> I, I really must go. Bye. Started already, then, eh? Well, 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 the invisible man. Yeah, yeah. So, how did the funeral go? Did Simon rise again? Very funny. I'm very sorry, but something pretty phenomenal must have happened for you to be away this long. Don't start, eh? Nobody's starting. We just want to know where you've been while we've been slaving away all day, that's all. I've been on the phone to every cop shop and Aussie in this world, right, trying to find out where Teddy is. Because I don't know where he is, I don't know what state he's in, and I'm worried sick about him, all right? Thank 
Thank you. So, how's the salmon? Mmm, perfect. What's the bag? Oh, some terrorist things. I just packed them up. I thought he might be needing them. Oh, where do you think they've taken him? I really don't know. I to God he doesn't end up in the morgue. God forbid. <laughs> the state he's in at the moment is probably the best place for him. Jean. Well, what kind of a future has he got ahead of him? He'll probably end up as some kind of sad tramp. Oh, I do hope you're wrong. If I ever end up like that, I hope you'll put me out of my misery. What? I'm serious. I don't want to end up my days wearing a nappy and sucking food through a straw. The day I wake up thinking you're my father, I'm cashing in my chips. Who bought all this on? Oh, I don't know. Terry Sullivan's Mad Hatter Act, the state of some of the more decrepit members of the club, and looking in the mirror every day and seeing this face get a bit older. Isn't that just life? I suppose so. Could we possibly move on to something a little less morbid? I'm sorry. So, what about this pantomime, my dear? Mm, top notch. I'm looking forward to it. Mm, so am I. We've got to start planning it after supper. Couldn't we leave it till tomorrow? Oh, why? Well, I um, had some rather more interesting post-brandial entertainment in mind. Oh, that sounds interesting. I thought that um, we might indulge ourselves in an early night. Ah, oh, so that's what all this was for. Just setting the scene. Supposing nothing happens, you'll only get upset again. Nothing ventured. Why don't we just stick to the pantomime for tonight, eh? Now then, Amanda, what's all the fuss about? Come in. Don't mind if I do. In chance of a cup, it's brass monkeys out there. Can we just get this over with, please? Oh, you're the boss. Hey, don't get caught for this loan. Take a minute. Fire away. This uh, offer to get rid of my debts by. Well, go on. Does it still stand? Of course. Right. <laughs> Why do you ask? I'll do it. Are you serious? Why? Why what? Well, why have you changed your mind? That's my business. When? Sorry? When? When can I get it over with? Well, it's the lady's prerogative to choose the day. Tomorrow afternoon. OK, then. The sooner the better. Amen to that. Where? Uh, my place. I'll, uh, I'll pick you up, yeah? Yeah, all right. Can you go now, please? Whatever you say. Uh, right. I'll, uh... I'll see you tomorrow, then. Brookside the Women is a Channel 4 video featuring classic moments from the first 12 years in the close, along with some brand new material. And it's out now in the shops.